seen a a um a fewer people than usual. Um, just a reminder that I'm recording these meetings. We we um, do that because we um, we uh, share them with people who couldn't be here, um, particularly those people at those at the, have those holidays. So if that's a problem for anyone, let me know. Um, but we do post them on YouTube after the fact. Um, can folks see my screen? Is it being shared? Yep. Awesome. All right. Um, Thank you, everyone, for joining. I uh, really appreciate the turnout. Uh, it's not quite as big as last week, but um, with the holidays, I can. apparently there's a holiday in Europe, so that is not a big deal. It happens. Um, but thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, we were, there was some discussion. Um, the, the agenda is, is kind of a standard one. The first thing that we were going to talk about was the, the update on the TR069 and the CM software integration within OpenWRT. Um, I just realized that I actually had a mistake in the agenda, but um, the the beta delivery timeline, I don't think uh, Felix or Luca are here, and also the people from ADB are not here, um, primarily because of the, the, the holiday. Um, it is apparently the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, which I did not know was a holiday, um, but you learn stuff every day. So... Uh, I don't know how much detail we're going to go into on that. Uh, I did get an email from Luca. He emailed the uh, Mateo at ADB saying that they had had looked at the at, uh, at the ADB code. They had looked at the um, uh, the the uh, uh, scale. What are, I'm just zoning in the name? Uh, the SCAL that uh, Felix has worked on, um, and they've made a couple submitted a couple patches to scale. Um, and they said they, they might be able to have something um, very, like, Hello World level working between the two next week. Um, but beyond that, I don't have a lot of detail on that. It is, I do have, this is John McQueen yep. again. Is there um, probably a question for ADP on, or ADB? Is what, for TR69, what data models are they focusing on for this cable minimum software integration to support? Um, that I, that I, I mean, we've talked about, I don't remember the details on that. Um, I think it, it was related to the TR-181, but I do know everybody had said that the TR-069, their particular stack is slightly different because it was a lot, it's based from what it sounds like every customer is slightly different in what they want. Um, I could be remembering that incorrectly, but that's kind of vaguely what I remember. Um, it would be better to ask them, though. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Because so, I, Eric, uh, yeah. TR69 is just the protocol stack, but TR181 is the data model. So, yes. uh, I think both are required. So, uh, I mean, TR69 stack is kind of neutral, but the main work goes in terms of data model because that's the one which you need to do mapping, like uh, if I take an example of Wi-Fi or DSL or any of these objects require mapping to UCI and all, so uh, I see the major work requires to be done every time on the data model. And TR181 is uh, another big data model which is used on routers. So it's really not TR, like cable modem specific or MTA specific data models. It's more for the router TR181 part of the cable room gateway um, integration. I think uh, other than uh, doc, uh, I mean the cable doxis layer, everything else is also going to be there like any routing, firewall, QoS. So these are some common features, right? I mean whether it is cable modem or it's a non-cable router. So I know TS9 uh, uh, is a protocol stack and then data model of TR181 already includes every part other than uh, cable physical layer uh, so uh, or cable layer 2 so uh, I mean it can be extended as well what I know but uh, I know doc I mean cable world doxis is the dominating one right All right, 
Well, I, I'm so okay. I believe if when we are doing this TR69, I think uh, uh, doing this uh, TR181 is must because these two go hand in hand. It's like uh, SNMP and MIB or <laughs> NetConf and Yang. Yang is the data model, MIB size the YD tree of SNMP, but uh, the other one is just the stack like SNMP or NetConf. So like the TR69 is a stack, but 181, TR181 is data model. Yeah, the, my understanding of is has been that that this is the exact mechanism for converting to kind of that standard data model of whatever it is, is um, currently being done. It's going to be done in code that either from ADB and or whoever, um, but uh, what exact, my understanding is TR181, kind of the the exact configuration uh, parameters vary a lot, so I, there's going to be a little variation, but generally it uh, that was, yeah, T, TR181 sounded like what was the standard and what they were going for. Yeah, from the title, I wasn't understanding if the approach was to have TR69 be a replacement to SNMP for cable modem uh, management, cable modem and voice management, or if it was just being used together with a cable modem gateway in order to get TR181 information from a cable modem gateway device. That was kind of my reason. I think it's the I think it's the latter, as is my understanding. Okay. But we can we can clarify that definitely. Um, there is some stuff in here that it was a this project kind of the description when we were at the in person we kind of realized it was a lot bigger than we originally had thought um, and it kept getting bigger it seemed over the two days so I know the first step was kind of how do you actually standardize um, have common API's a common uh, layer to actually fit in your uh, your configuration management um, and those type of things um, and okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> board farm status kind of got met, mixed up into that uh, little uh, bullet there. Uh, I don't have any update from my end. Um, haven't done anything with with board farm this week. Um, anyone else doing board farm stuff? Mike, anything from your end? No, not much to add. Just busy with other things recently. All right. Well, out of, out of curiosity, do you have like a Jenkins server set up for like your board farm, like running occasionally? Or yes, I remember you used to. I lost the link at one point. It's it's Jenkins.purplefoundation.org. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we we do have one. All right, uh, funding OpenWRT projects, not a whole lot of update here either. Um, we would have had updates from Felix and Luca, but they are not here. Um, we're accepting projects on a rolling basis. We've gotten a few proposals. Um, some of them are under consideration. Some of them just didn't quite meet what we were looking for. Um, but uh, we are still accepting proposals. We got some some really solid ones that they're, they're in the process of, of uh, kind of being improved it uh, you know I'm, I'm really happy that a number of the people who have submitted who are considering submitting proposals they've gone to the community first to talk about it um, so that's actually a really good idea um, to make sure that what they're doing is actually valuable so I'm really happy with that that's very good that's very good and uh, um, Hopefully that's going to make the proposals as, as strong as possible. Um, so we are, as, as a reminder, we are accepting projects that, that for funding that, you know, if you know of somebody, if you know of a project that you want to have funded, we can certainly try to find somebody who can, who can do it. But as we generally want um, projects that are as, uh, that are valuable to the entire community, um, that solve a problem that is, uh, preferably one that is uh, meets uh, that 
members of Purple are having, but in general, problems that the community is having and, and add features that are valuable to the community. Any comments on that? Any questions? All right, this is going quick. Uh, regulatory update. The big, the big thing for uh, that is, that has uh, been happening the last couple of weeks. Um, we uh, uh, the the subgroup that I was on, the software configurable radio. We submitted our um, paper to the full technical advisory council of the FCC. The technical advisory council is kind of um, we were uh, under the technical advisory council. Um, and the Technical Advisory Council is um, uh, is um, it, it reviewed it. It's it's a, it's a it's a group of of experts primarily. They're non-government employees, but they government employees are act as liaison uh, at the FCC. They reviewed a proposal, and it was unanimously accepted by the Technical Advisory Council to be published. I don't have, have the link to that yet. It doesn't, it's not actually on their website yet. I think they are, you know, it'll take a couple days. Uh, the gist of the, of the recommendation that we provided um, to the FCC was that we encourage them to be more specific in what they're looking for in the, uh, the uni regulations, um, in what they're looking for for security mechanisms and the specific what their expectations are in, in the uh, submissions uh, when you submit to have your uh, device approved. Um, and next, we also recommend that the, F that the FCC look into the in, um, encouraging the creation of a multi-stakeholder forum to really discuss this topic further. Uh, it, it became very clear with our committee, our subgroup, that we had a lot of great people um, but we didn't have the breadth of uh, experience that we really needed to understand the problem that we were being asked to solve and also to the consequences of any possible uh, solution we had to solve that problem. Um, and uh, it's a little unclear as to whether the subgroup is going to continue as an official part of the Technical Advisory Council. It may or may not. That they, they set priorities next year, and part of that is dependent upon the next administration and what their, uh, whoever they appoint for chair of the FCC. Uh, that said, uh, the um, head, of the, the chief of the Office of Engineering and Technology uh, expressed that he was, he, he spoke at the meeting, he's one of the liaisons um, from the FCC, and, and he expressed that he was, he sounded very supportive of the idea of a multi-stakeholder forum to discuss this topic. Um, to discuss uh, some of the concerns and to, to get more people together. Um, he was kind of uh, uh, said that, you know, he, he started out his comments saying, we kind of thought this problem, you know, you, you, you look at a problem right away and it sounds simple, and then you realize it's not. Um, so he seemed to be very supportive of, of uh, bringing more people together. So uh, we're going to... There's probably not going to be too much that's going to happen this that through you know before the end of January and or the end of December. I mean, there may not be much that happens before the new administration, um, but we're probably the people that participated in the subgroup, uh, including myself, are going to uh, have a have a meeting, whether it's an official uh, subgroup meeting or just people interested. Uh, we're going to meet in January, kind of talk about what do we think needs to happen next. Um, and how we should go forward. So I think that that in many ways this was the this is probably I'm I'm actually very happy with the result. I think this is the proper direction to go into because the problem is very broad, um, and the question we're realistically being asked to uh, provide recommendations for regulations and, and policy that affects almost every device that exists um, and is being sold because it's pretty much anything can be a software configurable radio at this point. Uh, so like I said, we, we need more people and I think we're going to want people both from the open source community but also from a lot of other communities that have interest in this, whether that be amateur radio, uh, people that do uh, rescue and humanitarian efforts, uh, people that are involved in public safety, all kinds of people. So 
that's kind of my general uh, summary on, on how it's gone. Any questions? All right. Um, with that, I'll actually go into the OpenWRT uh, Summit. Um, just kind of wanted to do the review. We were going to do it last week, but we, but we had so many people and then lots of good discussion, which is certainly very important. So I'll actually uh, switch over to that right now. We'll just kind of talk about the review of the survey that we, um, we got and kind of the results. I think it might be interesting to some people. Um, and this is from the summit meeting, so I will um, just kind of go through it. Uh, the quick results, uh, we had 31 responses from our survey, um, all but a few of those, those people that attended. We actually sent it to all the people that registered, so there could be some people that registered that actually ended up didn't, not coming because we did have a significant number of those people, it was probably about 50%. Uh, so we, um, we had a, uh, but I, I would say the result, the number of people that answered were pretty solid. Um, very importantly, we uh, had people had a very positive experience, uh, 8.2 out of 10, so I was really happy with that. Um, common answers for things people liked uh, was 11 people said the meeting core developers and community in person, 7 people said sessions, and 2 said community industry interaction. Um, I don't actually consider that low because uh, we didn't actually uh, specify what we were asking. It was just kind of a, a general open-ended question, so the fact that people mentioned that, I, I think that's a good thing, because um, that is kind of the goal. So I, I think this is this is very positive. Um, what are the things that people didn't like? Um, first thing, is there are too many talks in one day, um, which is not surprising. We generally felt that way too. Three people said the social event wasn't as good as Dublin. Uh, in Dublin, we had people uh, stand. We we kind of had, it was in a bar. We were people standing. Um, we were uh, talking. Um, you know, you could kind of mingle a little easier. Uh, for those who were not in in Berlin, it was we had we were sitting at tables. You know, it was also a kind of a bar a restaurant, but uh, we had just tables we were sitting at. So it, it kind of, there wasn't as much mingling, which I think was kind of disappointing. And um, in retrospect, I think people would agree, with, I, I would agree with that completely. Um, other one was not enough drinks, not a good location. Nah, yeah, I don't know. Those are fair things to, to comment on. Uh, three people said nothing. They, they didn't dislike anything, which is nice to hear. Um, there were uh, lunch, the lunch package uh, some people didn't like that. Uh, people didn't like that we ran out of coffee, which is unsurprising. That, that is bad. Um, three people said there wasn't enough depth to the talks. Um, I don't. I don't know. Um, there were actually some people that said there was, the talks were too deep. So that that's another another issue. Um, another some other comments were no, there was not enough of a demo area. Um, not enough community-focused talks. They, were, they felt there were too many industry-focused. And um, the other one was we need more European and Asian speakers. Um, there were a lot of – so those are those are some comments that came up. Uh, Highest-rated talks um, was the best practices for NAND-based firmware using UBI, 8.1. Um, this is out of 10 again. Uh, speeding up Wi-Fi is a 7.9. 7, uh, uh, why GPL enforcement is essential to OpenWRT's past and future was 7.8, and the industry and community panel was a 7.7. .7. So those are, uh, you know, I think that was really good. Um, those I kind of would have guessed ahead of time would be pretty popular, um, and based upon how they went, but that was that was good to hear. Are those talks available somewhere? Yes. They are actually all available. We have a link. If you go to openwrtsummit.org, you can. Um, we should have all of the uh, um, the presentations and the rec and the recordings on YouTube. Great. Yep. Thank you. Definitely. Um, this was to me one of one of the most important questions. Was after attending, how has your opinion of the OpenWRT ecosystem, which we described as OpenWRT lead, etc., changed? Um, 
and the answer was 7.2 out of 10, which I, which is, you know, so it's, it's positively changed. And to me, that's, that's very important. That's it's kind of one of the things that is core to what we do is that, that people, that this has a positive impact on, on the OpenWRT ecosystem. So I'm very happy with that result. Um, and I think that's, that's very great. That's exactly what we want. Um, some of the desired session topics that, that people, we asked people, you know, what, what are topics that you'd like to see that didn't happen? Um, was the release cycle of OpenWRT? That's a question that happens. Um, that comes up here. This comes up pretty much any, anywhere that we talk to people that this is a, a question that people have. Um, more on the OpenWRT lead split and more on lead in general. Um, this is uh, this is prior to the in announcement um, last week that there is an effort being done by the OpenWRT and lead teams to try to uh, merge the projects back together, um, in that they've made a a first step by having um, some of the members of uh, uh, the OpenWRT team. Uh, get commit access to the lead tree and that they are going to start to try to bridge the delta between the two projects. Um, they've, they've developed for the last, you know, eight months or so, uh, six months, what, whatever that, that they've, they've developed separately. And, uh, so they are going to try to bridge that gap, uh, going forward. Um, other ones, uh, developers discussing idea more. Also, what is development direction? That's a fair question. Um, so, Eric, on the previous one, uh, uh, I mean, so you said that uh, this open WRT was first led. So, uh, uh, I mean, if they are uh, merging back, then we are going in which side, uh, which one will continue? Do we have some info on this? Um, well, I mean, uh, uh, it sounded like they're going to try to merge OpenWRT into lead. Um, they're going to, that's kind of the impression I got, um, which is sort of understandable considering I think lead has had more activity generally. Um, what that means for the name and those things, I hope it means that OpenWRT will be the name. I think that's by far, the, the, it has a whole lot more clout in the industry, but ultimately that's up to the community to decide. So um, practically though, I do believe it's going to be, there is going to be one project, whatever it, it ends up with. But obviously okay. there are things that has to, things that have to happen. So, uh, but it is very reassuring that, that they're making that progress. Okay, thanks. Yep, no problem. Um, so yeah, developers discussing ideas more. Also, what is development direction? Um, VMs and containers was a question. Uh, mesh networking, link bonding, configuration management, all interesting topics that we didn't see. Uh, how to get involved and how to submit patches. This is a, a question that a lot of people seem to have a lot, pretty often. I think this is a difficult problem to, to answer, um, but it is something that needs to be done. Um, Hidden features of OpenWRT. One example is NAND snapshot. I'm not really familiar with that feature, but um, there are legitimately uh, some features of OpenWRT that people just don't know exist um, that are really cool. I think the jails is one that is, I, I would have loved to get a, get a talk from that, but uh, just didn't happen. Um, but that's, to me, one of the examples of a, of a really cool feature of OpenWRT that is uh, not used all that much because people don't know it exists. Um, or don't know how to use it. Um, Kahlua, an automatic deployment solution to the cloud. I'm not really familiar with Kahlua, but that was a, a uh, desired session topic. Um, thoughts, concerns, questions about Summit. Uh, someone suggested uh, development sprints, playground, hands-on sessions. I think we all agree with, with that. I think that was a, that was a, would be nice to have more hands-on sessions, uh, things like that. Um, don't run out of coffee. That's a pretty good one. Uh, excellent timekeeping. I will not take credit for that. That was mainly Shelley who was, who was, did a fantastic job of keeping time this year and, 
and uh, making sure that people did not go over. Uh, I was not quite as good as that the first year, so um, I appreciate her help on that. Um, just want to make sure we see the gurus together again, which is a, um, a fair point. Um, and the US-centric focus of the Linux Foundation might not be right to more cooperation with Asian hardware companies. Um, that's, uh, that's an interesting point that has come up a couple times that people have mentioned that more Asian um, participation would be valuable. Um, so yeah, we'll have, to, uh, we'll have to look at that going forward. Um, location, how valuable is co-locating with ELCE? This was a 4.4 out of 10, which was surprisingly low, I thought. Um, in the past, we've, we've asked the question before the first uh, event, uh, the first summit, that how important was co-locating with ELCE, and people would generally, it was extremely important. People said it was either vital or very important. Um, now they would seem to say that they're kind of mixed on, on the topic, which is, which is interesting. So it seems to indicate that co-locating with ELCE is, is at best an, a nice to have, but it's not a requirement. We also asked what locations people would like. Um, uh, five people said Germany, which is probably pretty understandable considering that Germany is uh, a location that has many of the OpenWRT developers. Um, and to me, that, that does indicate that we should probably strongly consider doing them in Germany in the future just because of the sim simplicity of getting OpenWRT core developers there. Um, two people said Prague. Uh, two people said Spain. One answer was somewhere in Europe. Uh, and another one was LinuxCon Europe. So all those are Europe-related. We did... I. I it's not on here, but I think someone had mentioned that Asia was a possibility, um, which is an interesting topic um, and something we will have to consider going forward. Because I think uh, a lot of people have pointed out that there are a lot of devices that are being shipped that are designed. Um, they tend to be low-end devices that are being designed and manufactured in East Asia, uh, particularly China and Taiwan. and are uh, using OpenWRT, and it would be and it is would be interesting to bring those those developers and those companies more into the community to properly use OpenWRT to use the features properly to um, you know best practices things like that. Um, it, that would that would be really interesting. I would agree. Um, that's a that's a tough one though because obviously. Uh, quite honestly, we just don't have people now who who are on the ground. Uh, we have a few people we know, but whether we have the people on the ground to organize that, that's the really difficult one. But I think it's something we do need to think about going forward. So does anyone have any comment on that? I think we only have three people on now, so in fairness, so... <laughs> All right. Well, it's something to think about going forward. Uh, question is, how often should the summit occur? 74% um, said once a year. Um, and 26% said twice a year. So the general thought is we should do it about once a year. Um, although twice a year is not necessarily a, a terrible idea. How long should the future summits be? Uh, two days, 61% said. Two days, 39% said one day. Uh, so there is a preference for two days, but it's not, you know, unanimous by any means. I think this is kind of something generally that we, we as a community kind of agreed that was probably a good idea. Additional thoughts. Um, do one day but parallel sessions. Uh, that's, that's a one way to ad address the fact that we have too many sessions in one day. Uh, during, when we did it during ELCE, this conflicts with sessions at ELCE. Um, that is was a problem because we did it during ELCE. We wanted to do it before or after, but the scheduling didn't work out uh, for the hotel we were at, and we wanted to do it in conjunction with ELCE. Uh, Co-locating with another conference for free was a bad idea. Either charge money or do after or before conference, which is kind of an interesting way to look at, the, at this problem um, because we had a lot of people register to come, but they didn't actually 
come. But the reason they probably registered was because they were already at ELCE and said, oh, I'll, you know, I want to go to that too. And so they kind of come in and out, but they don't actually commit to it. Uh, so it's an, a way to do that. I don't think we, we want to do that, but I think that is a, a, a an idea. Uh, less talks, more hands-on, more meet and greet and hackathon. I think we would agree with that. Uh, more talks about deployments in industry and show the success stories. This was, I thought, actually kind of interesting, is that we do talk a lot about how people use OpenWRT in the sense of, the development we talk a little we talk a lot about you know things like that we don't talk a lot about you know you, let's say you're a telecom how did you deploy openwrt and how did it go and what did you learn and how was it successful that's a, that's a little bit we don't kind of have those type of topics we haven't in the past i think that would be that would be an interesting um interesting topic to look at uh Feedback form is too late. Well, I, I apologize on that. I, I, it, it, I'll have to remember to do that earlier in the future. Um, great job. Thank you. I'm glad. I think the committee uh, did a spectacular job as well. Uh, and stop using Google Forms was was a was a uh, a uh, comment. So sorry, but it's really convenient. Um, so those were the those are kind of the details of that. Um, I. Uh, I think that those are the big things with that. Uh, any comments about the summit? All right. Um, last thing is the carrier interest group update. Uh, we did um, have a meeting on the uh, on Monday. Uh, kind of a follow up because uh, you know. Um, uh, I'm sorry, what's his, I'm zoning his name, um, Scott, Scott Wilkinson from Broadcom, he couldn't be at the previous meeting, he was, he was away, he had given some, he had emailed some information, but, uh, people just wanted to, you know, kind of get some sense of, of, you know, get some more breath on, on what his, uh, what Broadcom's kind of stance was on, on working on this common interface. Uh, I think the detail, the general detail was that, uh, Broadcom and Scott are very interested in this topic. Um, they generally want to do it. Uh, where it is on their timeline is a little unsure right now, so that we're going to have another meeting in uh, late January, which I'm going to send out the announcement for to kind of talk about this and uh, decide on on when we uh, when we do that, and we'll have some feedback on you know, any updates from Broadcom from that end. Um, at, the, at the same time, um, uh, Walter uh, from Soft and Home is going to continue working on coming up with uh, what exactly our, st our common API for Wi-Fi and for uh, push button, LED, and GPIO, how exactly that should work. Um, what those APIs we should all agree on are, and then have people that are on the carrier interest group talk about that some more. So I think that those, that's kind of the update there. Um, not a whole lot, uh, I would say, came out of the meeting. Um, just kind of those little updates there. That is uh, about all I have on the agenda. Any comments from anyone? All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone for joining. It's uh, I I appreciate you coming. Uh, those who who were, did not have a holiday today, um, and uh, we will see you again next week. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye. Too. Bye bye. Bye.